Dominique Toussaint Levatou, also known as Toussaint Levatou or Toussaint Breda, was the leader <clears throat> of the Haitian Revolution, the first successful slave rebellion since Spartacus against the Romans. You know, which I mean, this is the first time in history, as far as I know, uh, as far as a lot of people we know, is that that we we um, we hear about you know colonial excesses, right? We hear we hear. Uh, I mean, even before that, I guess it would be like Babylon. You know, the, uh, Babylon was also, you know, that's why the Europeans, they claim it, they claim all these, the wickedest of the wickedest, they, they claim it as their ancestors. So, <clears throat> so, but the, then, then there is, there is this, there is this, um, I mean, the way I see it, I feel like it was the so-called Arabs who probably started first you know the Phoenicians and all this stuff you know they started um, they started rejecting Africa uh, in order to to you know <clears throat> to ga gain sympathy from the Euro a a Asiatics especially the, the Asiatics you know uh, which was the first invaders of uh, the African continent I believe so you know that's you know that's how it started and I mean it all started with um, you know mixing races it all started with mixing races you know I, I mean I that's according to my research I know like I think all the books uh, that are you know decolonial about decolonial thought <clears throat> they agree you know that the demise of a, 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 a nation uh, of a you know a civilization it start with the mixing of the races because the the fruit of, of those of that race um, obviously uh, can be manipulated can be manipulated and, and a lot of times we don't even know it because they look like us they talk like us they walk like us but you know their alliance is to the other race so the earliest records of his life are his recorded remarks and the reminiscences of his second legitimate legitimate son Isaac Levatou. Uh, <clears throat> I read I don't know if it's if it's here you know Levatour that was his nickname you know the people gave it gave it to them that's how a lot of times you know that somebody is with the people um, you know, I was reading about this, you know, uh, a, a while back, and you know, I have confirmation here about Napo Napoleon uh, Bonaparte, and, and you know how I think that was one of the the biggest, if not the biggest, betrayal betrayal of 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 the left. And oh, also, let me show you this really quick. Um, um, I began to read it last summer, and then I stopped because I have I have ADD, and uh, sometimes I forget. But I'm talking about the the, the black Jacobins. Uh, I think this is gonna be. Um, this is why I wanted to do the video too because I, I want to see that this book is gonna change my perception of everything because. I believe um, this book, you know, it's very well recommended. <clears throat> Let me see if it's, it's coming up. Yeah. Let me show it to you. Um, so this um, is about, this thing is about um, the whole uh, island which they call Hispaniola, no? it's, it's called Haiti. Haiti, you know, even the, the, the native people always call it, name it, Haiti, you know? So he was, um, Toussaint Le Boutin was a, a Jacobin. So this is, um, uh, this is what, what I believe it is just like, this is, 
this is a, a, the, our tragedy. Our tragedy of infiltration, racial infiltration, and political infiltration. All these people uh, who pretend to be, you know, social, you know, that they want to do, you know, yes, we want to do. If it's not uh, social, we don't want it, right? We want about the people. And uh, they get in power, um, and, you know, we, we just saw that in Ecuador. In Ecuador, <clears throat> you know, he, he fooled everyone. You know, Lenin Moreno, even one of his best friends, which was the ex-president, Rafael Correa. And that was it. He took office, and we know the same story, you know. Oh, corporations don't have to pay taxes, you know, uh, start, you know, but, uh, slaughtering the, the budget. And for the people, oh, there's no money. There's no money for this. There's no money for that. The way we see, the way we've seen it in this country forever. There's never no money. There's never no money. And we just seen, you know, $2.2 trillion. No questions asked. I just got to open the window. I'm getting, I'm getting hot. I don't know why. It's supposed to be cold outside. I don't know why it's hot in here. Sorry about that. And uh, <clears throat> so let's continue reading. Um, most historians identify Toussaint's father as Gau, Gau or, or Gau Guinot, a younger son of the king of Alada, which is also spelled Arrada with double R. A West, a, a West African historian, a West African kingdom located in modern-day Benin, who had been captured in war and sold into slavery. That's why some biographers, uh, biographers obviously, uh, I mean, this, this, is, this is an old argument here, you know, uh, African-Americans are prisoners of war. And I mean, it's been an old argument. It's like, you know, should African-Americans uh, demand, you know, go to the United Nations? And, you know, but uh, they have to study very well, you know, what a prisoner of war is, you know, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it never really took off, um, you know. There's been a lot of, a lot of talk, a lot of talk here in, in the United States about, about doing stuff. But it just seemed like this past uh, 40 years, everybody's paralyzed. You know, like they say, you know, sometimes, you know, analyze, paralyze. And I think everybody's just overanalyzing. Talk, 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 talk. You're on Twitter, you're on social media. Everybody talk, 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 talk. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope that I'm wrong. His mother, Pauline, was, um, you know, Mr. Gold, you know, second wife. <clears throat> the couple had seven children. This is the second wife, seven children. This is why, you know, I, I push back against a lot of people, you, you, you know, laughing against transsexualism and, and even calling, you know, womb, the womb. They spell woman with a womb, woman. And I said, that's great. That is, that is amazing. But then you ask him, how many children you got? One one child, two, maybe three, and that's, they don't want to have children. They don't want to have children. So you just, you just bragging that you got a womb, but you don't use it. You know, it's full of spider webs. So that, that's a very dangerous thing. You know, that's one of the things that scare me the most, you know, because as soon as, you know, blackness, uh, diminish that's when they're gonna make the move that's when they're gonna make the move that's why they was never able to to mess with China or Japan because they reproduce like crazies they reproduce wildly 
you know, uh, <clears throat> which was, was one of the, the reasons that they outlawed um, weed, marijuana. You know, because they thought it's like, oh shit, everybody's gonna be here horny and they're gonna be breathing uh, babies like rabbits. And of course, they find that very threatening. You know, that's, that is power, that is power. You know, uh, the Spanish used to say, uh, goberna uh, procrear es gobernar. Loosely translated, I mean, uh, like to procreate uh, is to, to rule to rule you know you got the numbers you know then, then that's another way of course we've seen that here in the united slaves that basically is just a very small percentage of whites who is bossing us around because they own the land you know it's their constitution it is their judges even their courthouses <laughs> and even their lawyers the public pretenders and people they still expect justice i'm like okay well of course you gotta have some you know once in a while you have to have some cases and they publicize those oh there was justice for such and such and 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 they talk those cases and 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 they parade them everywhere they 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 put them they put them everywhere like like it, this is this is pervasive this is justice is is is, is very common in the United States, and it is not. It is called propaganda. Propaganda, you know, three, four cases, you, you, you parade them, and it's like, you see, oh, you know, they got a, they even got a, you, you know, you know, like 10 million reward, you know. Um, <clears throat> they, like I say, you know, they, they don't know exactly uh, the date of birth, but, uh, if his name is uh, Toussaint, so the day of, uh, of all saints is November 1st, right? So it is a Scorpio. So it, that's good because I, I, the thing I, I love the most about Scorpios is not what a lot of people think. This is how people are like, Ugh. no, they can keep secrets. Scorpios, they can keep secrets. They take them to the grave. And you try to to learn their secrets, and they'll fuck you up. They'll fuck you up. That's one thing. Is Scorpios, you know, like you you trying to find out their, their secrets? Uh uh, that's that's not. So I think that 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 was one of the things that made him very successful. You got a lot of people now. You give them a phone, and they start like blabbering about everything. Um, it's not good. It is not good because because remember the the first thing they attacked was manhood, black manhood. You know, if you want to call it black and brown manhood, okay, call it black and brown manhood. You know, I don't believe in black and brown, whatever. I just believe it's black because you know if it's coffee, it is coffee. You know, you can put cream, you can put flavoring, you can put sugar, and it's still coffee. <clears throat> but they have used that. This is this was very very and 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 later on they're gonna talk about it. But this is very strategic to call it a slave revolt. It is very strategic. Like nobody knows this. Nobody knows this. And everybody actually they attacking the people of Haiti because we don't know that we are in debt. We don't know that Haiti is the mother of freedom. We don't know that Haiti was uh, the people who, who made it all possible to make it because everything was like today, you know, reading, 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 uh, like books and whatever, reading, you have scholars, you know, I'm a scholar, I'm like this, uh, I'm the hood scholar, you know, and everything. And that's about it. And they talk, re and they talk really pretty. And that's about it. So, so it, 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 is, it is about, you know, all this got to come to fruition, right? We all know that. Everything got to come to fruition. Otherwise, it's just, you know, I guess, I don't know, science fiction. I don't know. Well, he was probably about 50 years old at the start of the revolution in 1791. 
and various sources uh, have given birth dates between 1739 and 1746. Toussaint is believed to, to have been well educated by his godfather. Um, so uh, Pierre Baptiste, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, but some historians they they speculate as to as to you know how how advanced his this education was. I suspect it's more like the Honorable Malcolm X that he was sneaking out books. You know, it's not like I mean, you know, because I know I know the crackers. I know the crackers. Like I said, like my story, I came here in 1989 because I was very Eurocentric. I believed the movies. I believe like, oh, you know, the whites in the movies are the same as the whites in real life. No, that ain't shit. And that was one of the memes going around, you know, with this uh, coronavirus thing right now in, in, in Latin America. Thank God. It was pushing them. It was pushing like, you know. Because people, it was telling people, you know, you see that the whites are, are, are like so great, like in the movies. Where is the help right now? Where is that, you know, the leadership right now? Non-existent. Non-existent. <clears throat> His extant letters demonstrate a command of French in addition to Creole uh, patois. He was familiar with a... a Epictetus, Epictetus. We call it Epiteto. In Mexico, we call it Epiteto, Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher who had lived as a slave. Had lived as a slave. How much can you live as a slave? You see how the language is so colonial. You really live as a slave. Well, well, apparently, apparently, I mean, Dr. Omar Johnson already debunked this. You know, uh, you know, there was people in families and throughout slavery and Jim Crow. There was a f nuclear family and, and, and there was a lot of values and progress. And, you know, that's why, you know, people was able to buy their freedom, their houses. People was able, like, you know, to have an economy. Of course, they all got bombed because we know the whites, they don't do fractions. They don't do fractions, you know, they, they just like, you know, everything or nothing, you know, and they already destroyed the country once, you know, during the Civil War, which was nothing but, you know, a hissy fit. Like right now, we see a hissy fit. They don't want to share it. They don't want to share with nobody. And this is like, and, and, and they see like, you know, there's no consequences for them because who did the reconstruction? Who did the reconstruction? <clears throat> who had who, who was been an, uh, who had been enslaved? I would say like maybe more accurate. He was enslaved, and his public speeches as well as his life's work, according to his biographer, show a familiarity with Machiavelli. I don't know who Machiavelli is. I really don't do whites. I really don't think, you know, in 2020, we still have to look outside, you know, um, to, you know to go to the Europeans. And um, I think it was Dr. John Henry Clark, you know, nothing that come from the, from the whites, it's meant to empower us. And he made sure he said, no exceptions. No exceptions, and I believe that. I believe, I tried every time, and they're like, you know, yeah. Why would they, you know? Hmm. So you gotta go around it and make your own research. Some cite Abe, 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 Reynold, who wrote against slavery as a possible influence. So we got we gotta study him. Um, I mean, he, he, he might be white, I don't know. It's spelled A-B-B-E. And his last name is R-A-Y-N-A-L. A-B-B-E with a, an accent on the E. 
the wording of proclamation of proclamation issued by then rebel slave trader the wording of proclamation issued by then rebel slave leader to song on August 29 19 I mean 19, 1793 um, sorry which may have been the first time he published used the moniker level two so he uh, embraced he, his nickname uh, seemed to refer to an anti-slavery pass passage in a Reynolds, a, a philosophical and political history of the settlement and trade of the Europeans in the East and West Indies. Oh, I gotta read this book. Uh, I'm gonna try to do it again. I'm sorry I read so awful. <laughs> A philosophical and political history of the settlements and trade of Europeans in the East and West Indies. So they found that, you know, <clears throat> and this is what it's all about. This is what you don't know who you're going to inspire. He may also have attained some education from the Jesuits. Uh, his Medic medical knowledge is attributed to familiarity with African her herbal medical techniques as if there's any other kind you know they're so African <laughs> it's kind of like you don't have to say and it's say as well as some of the ones that that in in, in the hospitals in the Jesuit hospitals However, a few legal documents signed by two sons between, uh, uh, oh my gosh, why am I jumping into words? <sighs> However, a few legal documents signed by, on, on two sons' behalf between 1778 and 1781 raised the possibility that he could not write at the time. <clears throat> Throughout his military, um, yeah, they, they, they talk about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it another 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 article after this. I think it's, it's that's where I where, where I read it. Uh, you know, he could read uh, he could write phonetically, and and you gotta think maybe that's why the whites they write it one way and they spell it another way. Hmm. It's just, it's just for them to, to know who is real and who is not. If you have a misspelling in a writing, then that's a telltale sign. This is why so many people become so obsessed with English. Oh, they got to pronounce it. They got to write it. It's like, I don't care about it. <clears throat> Throughout his military and politically, political career, he made use of secretaries for most of his correspondence. A few s surviving documents in his own hand confirmed that he could write, though he spelled in French language was strictly phonetic. Yeah, that's what it says here. Dasson <clears throat> Levateur began his military career as a leader of the 1791 slave rebellion in, in the French colony of Saint Domingue, he was by then a free black man and a Jacobin. This is this is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm thinking like this is gonna this is gonna open my eyes a lot. So I need to just focus on this book for a while until I finish it. And it is horrible. I give you the heads up. This is why I kind of like stopped. Uh, I was reading in the subway and. And I was like, this is not a good thing to read in the subway. It is this very descriptive. It is very descriptive. Or you wanna chap you wanna you wanna skip the first couple of chapters instead. Because it is very graphic. It is very graphic. These are the devil. There's no doubt 
there's no doubt. And <clears throat> like I always say, a rat is not gonna give birth to a rabbit, ever. No matter what, you know. So they are the same. A child, you know, a child of the devil is a devil. Oh, okay, so so I mean that that, that you can say that was um, you know like a slave revolt at that point, but later on, I mean, I mean to call it you know the most successful slave re rebellion is just like kind of like no, this is this is about all of us because he influenced um, uh, Simon Bolivar, Simon Bolivar in South America. You know, that's when, that's when he was like, okay, so now we know the, the weakest links, we know the weakest points, <clears throat> and that's how they, that's how they, they was able to observe. And this was all just, what happened, it was just because of the whites, um, you know, insanity. That's why they lost everything. I mean, but I'm not, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. So initially allied to, with the Spaniards of neighboring Santo Domingo. So some switch alliance to the French because guess why they, guess why he switched to, to, to the French? Because of tangibles tangibles you know they abolish slavery of course anybody will do that anybody will do that okay so you know you abolish slavery okay so i'm with you there's no tangibles this is why you know uh well i i find it that joe biden is right you know if, if you don't if you don't if you don't vote for him you know you are not black that's what he said if you don't know if you vote a Democrat, you are not black. But it's true. Because that was so, you know, traditionally African Americans voted Democrat. He gradually established control over the whole island and used political and military tactics to gain dominance over his rivals. Throughout his years in power, he worked to improve the economy and security of Saint Domingue. He restored the plantation system using paid labor, negotiated trades treaties with Britain and the United States, and maintained a large and well-disciplined army. And this is this is where I I, I feel like. In, in, in the in the times you know that he was in power five years I think um, you know that's that's where a lot of a lot of people fail a lot of people feel like we just seen uh, Evo Morales the president of Bolivia um, we just seen the the coup d'etat the the United States the United Slaves government um, orchestrated by infiltrating millions of dollars to the United Slaves uh, Embassy. So they were able to buy the military, they were able to buy the police, and it's devastating, devastating. The first thing they did was to empty out the arcs, to empty out the bank accounts, to take out all the gold, and uh, the country is broke right now. The country is broke. It's just uh, devastating, and nobody even retweeted. We watch it live on social media, and you know a lot of people. No, a lot of people didn't watch it, of course, because it's suppressed information. It is suppressed information, and but people are very okay in the United States, and that's disgusting. This is why you know I'm like, I'm learning, and I'm disgusted and horrified, you know, where am I? Where am I with people are so okay. As long as I continue having my gadgets and I continue having the the lifestyle I became accustomed to and you know, I don't care where they get the money from. 
I don't care where to get the oil from, you know, I just want, you know, my car, you know, to be able to go whatever the fuck, whatever the hell I want, sorry. Uh, you know, and that's, that is, that is what we leave. That, that is where we leave. And like, you know, for me, uh, for me, it, it's just been like another awakening, another awakening, like say like, what are these people made of? You know, and I'm talking about uh, across the board, black, brown, yellow, you name it, you name it. Nobody is raising their voice. I mean, <clears throat> this month alone, this month of May, has been constantly attacks against Venezuela. Constantly. Just two days ago, they dismantled another attack. Another attack. I mean, I'm talking about like hundreds of hundreds of uh, of um, you know um, how you call this uh, you know uh, you know I don't know. They're they're not soldiers. They might be soldiers again. Let's call them soldiers. You know, with tons of weapons, tons of you know even cell phones. You know, international cell phones. All of this stuff. You know. Constantly, constantly, you know, and and who is denouncing these atrocities against the people of Venezuela? Nobody. Nobody. We just want all the oil. We want all the gold. We just want like. It's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, to see like you know, one of the things I see like you know, let's say let's talk about Puerto Ricans. You think they give a damn about the people in the island? That's not been my perception. They do not give a damn. Oh, they cry. It's like, oh, you know, it's not like it used to be. It is not like it used to be. But do you think they're like, they're going to like, oh, okay, so, you know, I'm going to run for office and I'm going to make sure, you know, I give uh, my country its independence back. I make sure it get, they get reparations. I'm going to make sure they just want... You know, that's all they want. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, over here, I mean, I, that's not what I have read, you know, but, I mean, this actually, all the information I got, it came from, from Africana Studies. So, uh, they say, he restored the plantation system using paid labor, negotiated trade treaties with Britain and United Slaves and maintain a large and well disciplined army I mean that's not I mean uh, to say that he he the, the plantation system I mean I don't know I don't know I, I, I don't know if that is you know but I mean a lot of times you know black historians they have to put in a lot of there otherwise they will get like all these you know, why, 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 why are you going to say like he did? He, he kept it like the same. Okay, it was the same. In, nine, in 1801, he promulgated an autonomous constitution for the colony with himself as governor general for life. You know, I mean, uh, well, I will say that. I would say that because there's there's more information coming up. In 1802, he was forced to to resign by forces sent by Napoleon to restore French authority in the former colony. He was deported to the French Alps, where he died of pneumonia. Apparently, there was just another article I discovered. Unfortunately, you have to pay. I I didn't even look how much you gotta pay. I mean, it might not. Be, so I might pay to read the article uh, because it looked like really good. It sounded like he was poisoned too because they did the same thing to Napoleon. Uh, they found him on, in the morning of April 7th. So unfortunately for me, he most likely he died on my birthday. <sighs> you know, like my birthday is not really um, the year that I was born. It was the year they killed the Honorable Malcolm X. You know, that's why I always know how long ago that was. It was like two months. I was born two months after the assassination of the Honorable Malcolm X. 
1965. And, you know, now, you know, when I think of my birthday, you know, April 6th, I want to think of the assassination of um, Toussaint Levateur. You know, they found in the morning of April 7, it said here, and I mean, I'm not saying here, it's in the other article, and he did not have uh, rigor mortis. He did not develop rigor mortis. He was just laying, he was just like sitting like, like this, and he looked like he was alive. What that mean? Uh, they put uh, arsenic on, uh, on Napoleon, I think that's what it was. They was like putting, <clears throat> anyway. In 1802, and I already read that, he was deported, yeah, I already read that. The Haitian Revolution continued under his, you know, deportation. You know, I'm sure that probably, uh, you, you know, I mean, not probably, that got a lot to do. That is the people. This is, this is why I'm scared right now. This is why I'm scared right now. Because when we come, when we hear like deportation, the same thing, they did to the most honorable Marcus Garvey. Now, that's on the people. That's on us to defend our leaders. So, I don't know where we are right now in Mexico. Um, you know, our president did so much for us already. He is uh, 65 right now, and, you know, he's just, he's in great shape. You know, he only had a heart attack, but that was when they um, nationalized, I mean nationalized, privatized our oil again. He got a heart attack. That was it, but he bounced back and he's in great shape. Every day in the weekdays at 7, 7 a.m., he gave a press conference. You know, or <clears throat> he's he's impressed so many people. Even uh, that orange thing. Uh, that's why he's doing press conference too. You know, a lot of people are like trying to imitate, but it's a joke. They are a joke. Um, so so yeah, having a leader deporter, having a leader assassinated that's on the people because a leader can only do so much so our job is to protect them our job is to protect them and this is what I'm trying to convey to my people and this is a rehearsal because I'm, I'm a, trying to do this in my native tongue so I'm gonna tell them you know who who um, I'm, I'm reading Jean-Jacques Dessalines no I'm talking about Toussaint Levateur um, was and who is because he continued to be uh, the referent uh, for for freedom anywhere. I mean, you gotta you gotta study him if you actually want to get somewhere. <clears throat> so the Haitian Revolution continued under his lieutenant Jean Jean Jacques de Salines, who declare independence on January 1st, 1804. Glorious day, you know, let's not celebrate Gregorian calendar demonic stuff. This celebrate, you know, the beginning of the independence of the Americas. That's what January 1st mean. And that's probably why why they they are pushing. They made into like Times Square and everything to to divert people from from the real occasion of celebration. Because you know our journey began 18 first, I mean January first, 1804. That's where our journey began. Everything until that it was just like you know oh I'm sure everybody was talking about it. I'm sure everybody was talking about it. And I'm telling you, you know, just, you know, <clears throat> just to, so, so you can have like, you know, you may say like, oh, she's just saying that. She's just saying that. No, 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 no. We did it too. We did it too. You know, uh, what, what we celebrate on May 5th, you, you know, Cinco de Mayo. We celebrated 
<clears throat> a huge victory against the French. And because of that, I mean, I was just, I was just reading, you know, a while back and, you know, I have ADD, I haven't gone back. And all the, all the things that came out of our victory, you know, from people who used to worship the French, <clears throat> they, most people, they never heard who the Mexicans was. They never even heard where Mexican was, probably. But they got, they knew about us because it's like, who defeated the French? Who's these people who defeated the French? That's that's when that's when that was the beginning of the end. You know, for the empire. Of course, they still have colonies in Africa. Unfortunately, they get five hundred billion dollars a year from the colonies they got in Africa. <clears throat> and that she got an end. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but you can study that. You can study that, you know, the, the La, La Batalla de Puebla, the Battle of Puebla. You can study the Battle of Puebla and, and you know, what, how it influenced the, the whole world. And how we influenced the whole world too again, because we was the first revolution of the 20th century. The Mexican Revolution was before the Russian, the Soviet Union Revolution. So the French have lost two thirds of forces sent to the island in an attempt to suppress the revolution. And most died of yellow fever. So what goes around comes around. Shit, you get you get blankets with, with chicken pox and you know <clears throat> that's what they say that they all die of yellow fever because whites can never stand to say that oh it was defeated by black people. So they rather say they die from yellow fever, I'm sure. Legacy, um influenced by John Brown, which I don't know who he was, to invade Harper's Ferry, John Brown and his band captured citizens and for a small time the, fed the federal armory and arsenal. Brown's goal was that the local slave population would join the raid, but things did not go as planned. He was eventually captured and put on trial and was hung on December 2nd, 1859. <clears throat> Brown and his band of brothers showed the devotion of the of the violent tactics of the Haitian Revolution. Can't believe they actually put violent tactics. Violent is the first time I hear anything because I I never even hear the Mexican Revolution. I mean I mean of course you know once you get to like study and, and of course it's like but I mean. It, 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 it is like, I mean, are you supposed to beg for freedom? So far in the history of humanity, never happened. Never happened. You gotta take it. During the 19th century, African Americans used to sound a tour as an example of how to reach freedom. Also during, during the 19th century, Britain used to sound's domestic life and ignore his militancy to show Toussaint as a known threatening rebel slave. So <clears throat> we've seen that, we've seen that with Dr. King, we've seen that strategy being used over and over again. It was like, you know, there was very, you know, like, like a little cat. That's what they wanted to show us. Toussaint Levertour's military genius and political acumen transformed an entire society of slaves into the first successful slave uprising that led the independent state of Haiti. I got I could rewrite this. You know, you know, the enslaved, not slave, it was enslaved. We see him himself, he was the grandchild of a king. He was the son of a prince. 
and you call him a slave. Obviously, this is this is this is this is um, psychological warfare. This is nothing but psychological warfare because you read these and say like, oh, that little slave, that little slave that could, you know, or or something. And that's not what's not the case. He was the greatest slave uprising since Spartacus, who led the revolt against the Romans. The success of the Haitian Revolution shook the institution of slavery and its colonies throughout the New World. <clears throat> you know, I mean, of course, they don't even, how convenient they don't even mention uh, Simon Bolivar, which a lot of people, they don't know that Simon Bolivar, uh, he was a mulatto. You know, he he was a, a Creole, or, or you, you know, um, and I mean, yeah, it is true. His family owned slaves. That's that's how people say. You know, family enslaved uh, a lot of people, and that's also why why he he decided. You know, that's fucked up. That's fucked up, Simon Bolivar. I I mean, he was. Of course, he was great uh, in a sense, but you know, I mean, I still yet to find out why he was gonna name uh, the new country, which was gonna be, you know, Colombia. Uh, I mean, today's Colombia, Venezuela, Panama, Bolivia. Um, you know, I mean, the, the entire. You know, this is what what um, <clears throat> we're trying to do, like today. People trying to do today in Africa, right? You gotta make Africa, you know, like, you know, kind of like the African Union, where where people, where people uh, don't have, you know, too many obstacles to trade in, to travel, uh, and and all that, you know. So that was the vision of of Simon Bolivar, but I mean, that was the vision of everybody at that time because everybody at that time they knew, especially. Because if you if you read uh, Simon Bolivar, you're gonna um, you're gonna you're gonna see the United States, you know, United States government, how imperialistic it was from day one, from the start. You know, <clears throat> actually, they, they what they said it was like um, that they they said that you know the whites over here they said it's like the Spaniards they're just watching. Our colonies until until the moment come that we taken from them, and they did uh, they, they 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 did some, and and but that's just what is it? They was never, there was never. I wouldn't even consider um, an independence. The July Fourth that the, that people celebrate um, is not an independence. It's just a transference of um, government, you know, to the to the whites over here. That's all it was. That's all it was. So it says, uh, they say they say the United States was the first uh, country to gain its independence. Where? I just want people to show me where. Oh, but the taxes, they don't go all across the... Well, that's about it. I mean, I don't know. To San to in power. This is another article from another. Um, I'm gonna put all the 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 links on the description box. Um, 1796, 1801. I'm sorry, I wanted to yawn. August 70, 17. <clears throat> this is this is a timeline. This is a timeline of um, uh, Toussaint Levator. August 1796, primary electoral. Assemblies in Saint Domingue are formed to elect colonial representatives to the legislative body in France. The outcome facilitated Levateur, facilitated by Levateur, results in positions for Lavaux and Saint. Don Santonno as deputies of the French legislature. 
oh, he was he was an amazing politician. It was like, whoa, just like how he was like a bullfighter, like a bullfighter with at least three humongous bulls. Like I said, the British, the Spaniards, the, the, the French, same shit. You know, but but they 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 was coming all at it. So he was able to to make treaties over here, make treaties over there, and you know, and the the thing that I was t trying to tell you before, I think one of the things, the main failures of uh, um, the great uh, Toussaint Louverture was not um, internal internationalizing. Um, it was uh, the lack of uh, diplomacy, and to to my, to my with my perspective, and uh, <clears throat> I mean he did it, but I think he probably he probably did it with the whites. He did it with the whites because of course you got the whites right here. They were like, okay, basically, when he was, uh, you know, his political life, he had. A gun over here, he got a gun over here, a gun in his back. You move a little bit this way, they shoot you right here. You move a little bit that way, they shoot you that. They shoot you from the back. He was in a very, very critical uh, position according to, to what I see. So so he got to strategize and everything, but um, I think underhandedly and secretly, he shouldn't make packs with the with the black uh, hemisphere, with the black world. You know, that would have saved him. And <clears throat> to have him, you know, just wait. And when I ask you, you gotta move, and you gotta move very quietly. And you gotta move like, you know, like tourists or something, and, and you know, snake in arms and stuff, you know. Um, I think you know, and and but for that, I think you need uh, a decolonized mindset. And he was just fresh from you know, he had to work with what it was, with what there was, which it was all like white thought. I mean, not white thought. I guess it was. I don't know. You know what? I, you know what I'm trying to say. October 1796, power struggles developed in the face of Lavatour, Lavatour um, growing power. To solidify his position and strengthen his ties, Santonat appoints Lavatour commander in chief of the army. Lavaux sails to France as deputy while Saint-Tonant reluctantly stays in Saint-Domingue to perform his duties as civil commissioner. He plans to depart the colony in, in 18 months when his assigned assignment ends. August 25th, 1797, Lavatour, oh, why? This thing is good. forces Santono to return to France prematurely in a political move calculated to strengthen his position and gain favor in France. Santono, uh, despite wanting to leave the colony in the first place, find himself forced out. As a result, instead of a normal and peaceful departure, the event become a humiliating and force, forcible expulsion. The remaining civil commissioners in the colony defer to Levateur, reaffirming that he is the most powerful figure in Saint Domingue. I mean that that's <clears throat> you know, I guess how would you call it? Organizing one on one? 
Levateur misjudges, however, and instead of gaining favor uh, abroad, his audacity threatened the French, and he is quickly seen as a major threat. So, obviously, there was no, um, you know, they haven't really turned a page in France, right? Fall, uh, fall 1797 to winter 1798, Levateur, Levateur's armies conquers most British occupy Saint Domingue in the west. In the south, uh, Rigaud. Rigaud's army conquers the British at Jer 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 Jeremy, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. March 1798. A British surrender, I mean, the British surrendered their fight for Saint Domingue and negotiate peace with Lavatour. Lavatour agreed to grant full amnesty to French citizens who didn't fight with the British. All black troops enrolled in the British Army and the uh, emigres who, who had abandoned the British prior to the opening of negotiations. So, I mean, it, I think it, it would be more over here, you know, like the Africans, um, it, will, it should be like Africans, you know, because this is, this is, I think this is where it starts the whole thing, like this is a black victory. Of course it's a black victory. Don't get me wrong. This is a victory of, of, of the black people, the African people. This is a, a victory, but is it only a victory of uh, black people? Is Haiti just a victory? When it, it is spawned international um, events? I don't know. April 1798, France sent another official agent to Saint Domingue oh, oh, upon, upon the return of Saint Donat. Commissioner Hedouville arrives in Le Cap. His mission is to promulgate laws of the French legislative body to entrench respect to entrench respect for French national authority, to prevent blacks from abusing their freedom, and to strictly enforce French law against the immigrants who first came to the colony in 1771. And strictly enforce French law against the immigrants who first came to I don't, I don't know I have to study more like I say a lot of uh, I got gaps <laughs> I mean I hope that, that you realize you got gaps and then you study too in reaction to France mounting fear of level two and his black army oh, uh, Hedoville tried to disempower Levateur by dividing him and Rigaud. Yeah, that's, with, without it, you know, the whites can do nothing. They gotta divide, right? Though he is unsuccessful. Though he is unsuccessful, Hedoville managed to force Levateur's resignation, resignation from the directory, insulting him in in France and arranging to replace him with a three with three European generals. In addition, I mean, like that's this is one of the things. Like you know, the whites are not gonna be given no power to anyone unless he's outstanding, 
outstanding, you know. So we all know that. In addition, he feels that Saint Domingue army. He he feels the Saint Domingue with white soldiers sending the black troops back to plantations. Yeah, that's when that's when you know they they try to um, to do damage control, right? The slaves view Hedoville's actions as an attempt to reinstate slavery and a new wave of insurrection breakout. June 13, 1798, Lavatour signs a secret alliance treaty with England and the United States. And actually, they, they do have a picture. Let me show you. I haven't really shown you some of the pictures that they got. Let me just go to make sure that you can see them. No, this is not. This is the one I got there. This is one of the pictures. Well, there was no cameras, but you know, the paintings to commemorate, I guess, um, this treaty. At least that's where the picture that was with it. Yeah, you can see it, more or less. There's beautiful um, paintings of Toussaint. This is the article I say, you know, you, you, you gotta pay to read this article. This is all you can read. <laughs> this is all you can read from the article. And it's about, you know, the assassination of uh, Toussaint Levateur in France. It's a beautiful picture. So over here, it's painted uh, as a moor, I think. I don't know. Don't. I mean, this is all for, for you to, to do your own research. I'm going to read you what it said over here. Portrait of Toussaint Levateur, crawl from lithograph by George the Baptiste, circa um, 1870. Now this is where they say where this is the investigation that say that that it was the assassination of Toussaint Levateau. This is the article I was talking I'm talking to you about. Look at this, is, um, somebody just posted they were in Mexico. This is one of the pyramids in um, Cancun. Anyway, so let's continue. It's, it's just like a, like, like a chronology. October 1798, British forces evacuate San Domingue as part of an agreement not to interfere with trade with, Fran with France's colonies, with the French colonies. The French economy depressed during its war against Spain and England reopened to colonial input reopens to colonial imports. At the same time, merchants, bourgeois lobby, I mean merchant, bourgeois lobby to reinstate the slave trade. Napoleon faces increased pressure in France to bring down Lavatour and take back Saint-Domingue, which is a tactic we can use right now with the orange one. October 23, 1798, Hedoville missteps and tried to have Moise arrested. Moise, the idol of the black workers and Lavatour's nephew, managed to escape, issuing a call to arms 
to to black workers throughout the plane. Lavateur ordered the Saline and his troop to march on, on Le Cap to arrest Hedouville. Meanwhile, mulattoes from around the colony joined Rigaud in the south. Levateur <clears throat> concurrently strengthens and re re reorganize, reorganizes his army in the north. 1799. I gotta, I gotta make it in bowls. <laughs> Bonaparte, Bonaparte's over, overthrow, overthrows the directory in France, destroying the democratic republic and its anti-slavery principles. You see, and we don't know Napoleon Bonaparte as the big traitor that he was and it should be it should be you know <clears throat> he declared himself consul for life restores restores the pre-revolution status quo of white rule and turn his attention to Fran to France's colonies which I mean again we all gotta we all gotta read this we all gotta read this I have to I have to insist, insist, this is all documented right here, the repercussions in Europe and the Americas. July 1799, civil war between Lavatour and Rigaud break out. Rigaud take over command of Legong and Jacmel, while Lavatour take Petit Jove and my French is horrendous. This and I studied three semesters, you know, over a period of like 15 years. I never practiced it, so we forgot and all. This power struggle fraught with issues of race and class ultimately benefit the economic interest of the america the americas and the british of course that's what it's intended for let me read again because this power struggle fraught with issues of race and class ultimately benefit the economic interest of the americans and the british who seek to maximize their trade to the the treatment of the French. Yeah, notice that. You gotta remember that Haiti was like the crown jewel. It produced so much sugar and cotton, I think it was like coffee. I, I don't know, but but sugar, I was like, you know, like I told you. I'm so, I don't even think I, I think I'm telling you, you know, like, like what I said, like Michael Mihotep was saying that. It was addicted. That was their first crack for them. The first, uh, the first, uh, Fentanyl. I'm sorry, the fentanyl. That was their first fentanyl. Sugar. Sugar. That's why they was like determined to find more sugar. That's why, you know, they say, you go and find us some more sugar. Because we are addicted to sugar. From the vantage <clears throat> from the vantage point of international politics, Saint Domingue was being manipulated as a piece of on a chessboard and the outcome of its internal struggles would be a key of the particular political and economic advantages that each of the three contending foreign powers intend to reap no, to reap to reap <laughs> reap reap I never really seen that word written, I think, read. Um, April 1800, Lavatour sent a military expedition into Spanish Santo Domingo to bring the territory under his rule. At the same time, a mass uprising of armed black 
for work workers break out in the north in support of Levateur. Levateur negotiations with the Spanish ultimately fail, but this he success successfully gained the masses popular support. Now, this is why you always say, you see, the spicks are the worst. That's all people remember. <laughs> Moise marches in the south with 10,000 troops. May 1800, Bonaparte sent a new commission to Saint-Domingue to confirm Levateur's power in the colony and in, in, state, in state France's most recent constitution and in states yeah he imposes France most recent constitution which is all you know conservative you know neo-nazi you know white supremacist shit you know the new constitution proclaimed that French colonies are to be governed by a set of special laws that take in, into the account the particularities of each territory. It states that Saint Domingue in <clears throat> not, is not to be represented in the French legislative body and will not be governed by laws for French citizens. The Constitution does not address the colony's general emancipation, but it is carefully worded to assure blacks of its inviolability. Levateur, meanwhile, is focused on endi ending civil war in the South and disarming Rigaud and his army. July 25th, 1800. The Saline defeat Rigaud with the help of American vessels and the Jacmel at the Jacmel port. Levateur exiles Rigaud, Rigaud, I'm sorry, exiles Rigaud to France and redivides the areas of conflict he grant yeah i mean <clears throat> that's that is like i don't know in his uh, until this day you know we still think white in many ways he grant general amnesty to every person who helped him fight rigol August 30th, August 30th, um, 1800. Levateur is proclaimed the colony's supreme commander in chief. He and his revolutionary army of ex slaves, <laughs> gosh, that's all they remember for, are, uh, I would say, Haitians, right? <laughs> the Uncontest are the uncontested dominant force in Saint Domingue, and he began to impose what is essentially a military dictatorship. He has an army of 20,000 men to enforce his position as absolute master of the island colony. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, I study a little bit of Simon Bolivar, and it was the same thing. You have these freaking raccoons that, oh, no, I want a I wanna white um, king. They all wanted, like, you know, especially, like, in Peru. In Peru, oh, my gosh. Like, they was like, oh, no, we, we want a white king, and that's it. You know, so... So this is this is something very necessary. This is something very necessary. Once 
you know, we get to a certain level, um, all the traders gotta be addressed. Defin definitively. Levateur institute a new set of policies enforcing enforcing the traditional plantation system so that the colony the colony's shaken economy can produce exports for France. I mean that that was it. You get you can only get to a certain point before that, you know, they say, okay, we're gonna send, you know, all the military to Haiti and we're gonna teach you. That, that's very scary. That's very scary. So you gotta do these dams as a colony, you know, into like, okay, um, ha, just to go to another day, through another day. This is an extension and reinforcement of earlier work, war codes imposed by French civil commissioners such as uh, Santana, Porverel, and Hedouville. The laborers see the policies as an effort to reinforce, to reimpose slavery. They further object to Levateur's plan to import Africans to increase the Saint Domingue labor force and buy its economy. No, it says B U O Y. I never seen this word. Buyo. I don't know what that means. Sorry, I'm most always time over there. January. Uh, 28, 1801, the governor of Spanish Saint Domingue cedes control of his of his territory to Levateur to make his achievements permanent. Levateur forms a central assembly to write a new constitution for all of Hispaniola that abolishes slavery on the entire island so how you say that he imposed the same thing if there was no slavery so it's not really the same but you know a lot of times people just want to lie i don't know lavatour's achievement achievements during his years in power include social reforms structuring and organizing a new government establishing courts of justice and building public schools that's it and, and and you know they they finally they they destitute they did a coup d'etat against um lavalas uh president i forgot his name just for building a couple schools they exile him the whites they did a coup d'etat in Haiti. So this is all he did. And and all you talk about, all you talk about is like, ah, oh, he was cracking the whip and he was like, yeah, the ones that they want to be slaves still. I'm going to read again. Levateur's achievement during his years in power includes social reforms, structuring and organizing a new government, establishing courts, of justice and building public schools. We go now to July 8, 1801. Levateur proclaimed the new constitution in Saint Domingue and is declared governor general for lifetime. The constitution which is set which is sent to France, sanctions the structures Levateur had already set in place and, emphasize, and emphasizes the bourgeois principles of the French Revolution. Really. The constitution which is sent to France sanctions the structures Levateur has already set in place and emphasizes the bourgeois principles of the French Revolution. I don't know what I mean. Slavery is abolished 
forever and the constitution eliminates social distinctions of race and color which is this is what our president did too in Mexico Vicente Guerrero and it turned out to be a disaster but you know they didn't know any better at the time slavery is abolished forever and the constitution eliminates social distinctions of race and color stating all individuals be admitted to all public functions depending on their merit and without regard of race or color all individuals born in the colony to be equal free and citizens of france voodoo is outlawed mandatory labor is codified and catholicism is established as the colony's official religion you see this is this is like i said this is a dance if you're gonna judge him just by this i mean like that's the same thing we do in mexico anyway black slaves chaffing chafing against levateur's mandatory labor requirements reject the measures through various forms of resistance yeah this is like I mean, if you if you're already brain being brainwashed, and all you want to do is you want to be able to, you know, yeah, you want to kick out the whites, but because you want to live like the whites, that's a mess. That's a mess because there's sacrifice. It's a lot of sacrifice. You know, our president just announced a month ago uh, austerity measures. Austerity measures. So so it's like because of the the coronavirus. And we still get a lot of people like, well, you know, our economy, yes, we are, we, we are supposed to be number 15, you know, uh, in, the, in the size economic, into, as, some, as into like size, right? But, <laughs> I mean, even if you compare it to like the economy of the United States, it's like, we are like 1%. Of the United States economy I don't know anything about economy no. though the Constitution essentially usurps the powers the, the power of the French Saint Domingue still identified as a French colony that's why he's a governor now I understand why he's just a governor because they don't get there yet yeah this is something like that like you can study also the great uh commander uh president uh hugo chavez in venezuela oh he was amazing he did a whole constitution he he did a whole constitution and took everything from the whites and and hugo chavez was black by the way of course you don't want to hear it Though the Constitution essentially usurped the power of the French, Saint Domingue still identify as a French colony. The Constitution attempt to establish Saint Domingue as equal to France, essentially, uh, uh, where did I saw that, asserting the colony's autonomy while still trying to receive benefit from benefits from France. Hold on a second. Yeah, before I forget, it's right here. Yeah. This is on my YouTube channel, you know. This is so good. You just hide these clowns from my YouTube channel. Though the Constitution is not a formal declaration of independence, Bonaparte immediately recognizes it as a threat and rejects it. You see, this, this was the crossroads for, for France, the empire of France, right? 
and we know after that, you know, the Louisiana Purchase, the Louisiana Purchase, you know, Cinco de Mayo, losses, 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 which is what we're seeing right now. How it was kicked out of Yemen, uh, we, no, it was kicked out of Syria. Uh, you know, we did not respond to Iran bombings. Yeah, against the, the the military bases, the United States military bases in Iraq, we like we've been on like losing streak. <laughs> Though the Constitution is not a formal declaration of independence, Bonaparte immediately recognized it as a threat and rejected. General Victor Emmanuel Leclerc, Bonaparte's brother-in-law is sent to Saint Domingue to reimpose slavery and the Code Noir. You know, the black codes that 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 there was here in the United States too. By now, planters are increasingly unhappy with the state of affairs in Saint Domingue. Yeah, of course you 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 didn't know that he was trying to avoid that. A reverse you know like a whole you know that's what he was gambling with you know like I told you he got a gun here got a gun here got a gun here you move this way boom they shoot you over here they should so he had to be like ah, we, we don't have vision we don't have vision and uh, well especially back then I guess information was not as pervasive I don't know but now we can and we have access all we got to do is just do research and see who is who because, you know, we run the risk of somebody really sold out. If somebody really sold out, then they got to be taken down. By now, planters are increasingly unhappy with the state of the affairs in Saint Domingue and are relying on Bonaparte to unseat Levateur, restore slavery and facilitate the rise of the colony once more. Oh, these are the planters. I don't know who the planters is. Who owners for the plantations? Why don't they say the landowners? The oligarchs? I don't know. Bonaparte is sympathetic, declaring that Toussaint was no more than a rebel, slave, who needed to be removed, whatever the cost. Yeah remind you that Napoleon Bonaparte was the one who who ordered uh, the soldiers to uh, you know to shoot at the what they call a sphinx which is a statue of Heru you know Heru in the horizon that's how it was known uh, because it obviously had Africoid features July 19, 1801, in the United States, President Thomas Jefferson reassures the French that he's, he opposes independence in Saint-Domingue and pledges, and pledges to support Napoleon's agenda, which, by the way, the United States uh, was against anybody's independence because they say, oh, no, you, like I just told you, they say, oh, no, you're going to stay with the Spaniards, you know, because they're just watching you until we can go and, you know, snatch it away from the Spaniards. October 1801. A massive uprising against Levateur's regime uh, break out in the north, and Moise is rumored to be involved. In Limbe, west of Le, Le Cap, 250 whites are killed and rebels occupy Genève with the goal of killing whites, y uniting mulattoes and blacks and declaring Saint Domingue independent. The rebels support popular land distribution and charge Levateur with exploiting the masses of Fran at France's benefit. 
Moise is no is known to oppose his uncle and have refused to make his laborers work saying what say what not the was not the executioner of his own color and that the blacks had not conquered their liberty to labor again under the the road under the rod and the whip on properties of the white well first of all the whites do not have any property so i mean this is a chapter i have to study of oh, his nephew Lavatour has Moise arrested, tried, without defense, and shot. He brutally suppresses the uprising, and 1,000 rebels are killed. This is, this is another thing that, that's very critical. In the moments when you're like gaining freedom, like we see that in Mexico right now. They say like, oh, you know, President Lopez Obrador is this, this, and that and we are going to be the, the real change and it's not and it's not so i gotta study his nephew the ruling class split and uh, split on levateur's action become become further divided levateur's left wing support support dwindle um considerably weakening his position. He become completely isolated from whites, mulattoes, and blacks. His, his former base of support. So that was, that was it, that was this article. Last updated, October 27, 2015. They welcome, they were, the, the site is sponsored by Brown's Department of Africana Studies. So like I said, this is from Brown University. So, so there you have there you have a lot, a lot of tips for you to do research. This is not to learn anything. This is this is to to do um, to do research. That that's what that's what it is, you know. Hey, Ronza. I I don't know if you're still watching. I didn't, I didn't even look at the the commentaries. So, I mean, I wanted to talk. I wanted to talk about um, what's going on here. Am I still broadcasting? Uh oh, is there sound? I don't see no so, yes, I mean, yes. Because I feel like it, it should be revisited. The and and realize that yes, this is a black victory. This is a black success. This is black excellence. But um, by solely keeping it at that people are not gonna know people are gonna think like oh you know like oh gosh you know freedom is something like so impossible everybody I talk to they say like yeah but you know you know they have so much technology you know my that's what they want us to believe that they have so much technology you know like we see the videos cutting off we see like everybody's videos is lousy and and stuff so i mean the phone service is horrible i mean that's what people are, are using i'm using wi-fi um so i mean it's it's propaganda it is propaganda so there, there's gotta there's gotta be um we gotta be a little bit more uh fearless we gotta be a little bit more um uh, I mean, I, I, I don't even know, but I mean, it's not just the whole story. It is not just the whole story to say um, this is just a black revolt because, like I said, they was the one who divided us. 
saying, oh, you're black. Oh, no, you're Indian. No, you're Indian. Oh, this one is black. And we're starting to begin to, we're beginning to start to come out of, out of that identification because we see that. And, and, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm constantly telling everybody, you got to come to Mexico. You got to come see and, and, and claim what's yours, reclaim what's yours. I mean, one of the things I propose is, is just to make a coalition, especially historians, archaeologists, sociologists, you know, all those is uh, and make a coalition and come and come to Mexico. Right now, we began to build a train that's going to be connecting all the major, all the major archaeological uh, sites in the southwest. Oh God! Oh my God! It's cloudy days. It is not excuse. I'm sorry. It's just an explanation. Um. <clears throat> so that's gonna be pretty, pretty, pretty fantastic, because anybody's gonna be able to go and see it for yourselves. People they don't realize how revolutionary this is. This is really gonna change. I mean, like, if you don't get involved in this and you don't go and say you know because over here in the metropolitan museum of art the gays they got their own tours and they force the museum to say like oh no you know these are gay acts you know from the greek and roman collection that they got over there so so they they you can do the same you got a million non-profits all you got to do is just force them and say, you know what? We ain't going to give you no money. We, we're going to denounce you. We're going to protest you. We're going to picket you unless you do what we tell you, which is like sign this letter, write a letter and, 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 and say, this is, this is it. You know, we are not agreeing to this or, you know, you know, whatever the case, the way they do the Jewish, um, anti-defamation league. The Jewish Anti-Defamation League, the GLAD, the Gay and Lesbians Against Defamation. You get a letter from them and people, they shake in their boots. They know because they know it's like, oh shit, they're going to be like having all this, this gossip, uh, smear campaigns and stuff against you. So nobody wants that. That they're terrorized. You know, we learned like 20, 30 years ago, we learned the Christian Coalition. You know, just just a few whites in a trailer park, terrorizing everybody. Terrorizing everybody. You just can study that, the Christian coalition. You know, it was literally in a trailer park. You know, just writing shit. Like, like you know, I think it was 20 years ago. That, that's, we, we found out who, we are, who they are. All this stuff, I mean, like, it, there's a lot of stuff that it has not been done or that is not being done um, that you know I mean it's right there it is right there you know with that train because you, you it's gonna be like a hop on hop off you buy a ticket and you can hop on and hop off and you go back and forth of course the locals are gonna get priority you know, there's going to be another another train and a, another like, an, I don't know how they're going to plan it, but we're going to prioritize the locals. And um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to say it's going to be a lot different from, from everything there is, because I mean, like, for that, that, that require a, a deeper level of decolon mental decolonization. So, um, that's what I say. That, that's what that's what I'm saying. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, mi casa es su casa, because I know it is true. I'm not making things up. I'm not being nice to say mi casa es su casa. I'm just pointing out the obvious. I'm pointing out the obvious. You know, like every every day you can you can look at it. It's like oh, this is African. This is African in my country. In my country. Like there was a meme going around that said everybody want a piece of Africa except Africans. And it's true. Self-hate is a cancer. 
that can be, you know, eradicated. You know, like most cancers, all you got to do is just stop eating sugar and starch. It will go away. In this case, just stop watching television, stop reading all their stuff. And if you read it, you got to you gotta have, you know, um, a different mindset. Not just to be like, oh, I read it in their books. Oh, I'm sorry. I read it in their books and that's it. You know, oh yeah, but like people fighting. I read it, yeah. I mean, like, like people they give me arguments and like about stuff, and it's like, yeah, who pay for that study? Who pay for like whatever? So get the hell out of here. If it's from the New York Times and it's from all those their fucking garbage media, I mean, you gotta do way better than that. You gotta do way better than that, and you can do the research. I mean, it's right there. I mean, imagine because it, it's a jungle. It is a jungle. Imagine, you know, how great this is. Even if you're old and decrepit, you still can get on the damn train and, and, and you know, and go to at least five archaeological sites. Versus before, it was just like, it was not easy. I mean, right now it's not easy to get to, get to these places. But you have a train over there, all you got to do is just say, like, this is ours. This is ours, and we're going to learn the languages, and we are going to be the ones giving the tours. You got to take control. You got to say, like, uh-uh, this, this came from Africa. This is ours. You know, I just told somebody online, you know, this, and it was just like, and I got another kick in the teeth. You know, Mexicans are very like whatever, like, like. <laughs> it, it it is. I mean, we all been brainwashed, but I mean that's just ridiculous. You know how like when 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 you, I mean we did it before and and we're gonna do it again. Yeah, because you all forgot that we abolished slavery more than 25 years before they did it here. All you gotta do is just cross the border, cross the border. And right now, it's the same thing. You gotta do just cross the border and get a whole new mindset, get a whole new, you know, it's not what the people tell you. It's not just what people tell you. There's way more. There's way more uh, to Mexico. I don't know any other places, so, so it's like, I cannot tell you about uh, any other places, but now is a good time to buy collective land, you know, just to buy, like, you know, just for like, um, like a, like a timeshare, like a timeshare. You can buy with other 10 families and you can take turns. You go one month, you know, 12 families, each family, they go a different month. You stay a whole month. Imagine your children, they will get like, but that's, that's what they don't want. They don't want us to unite. That's what this old anti-Mexican sentiment that is rising like a wildfire is about. Because they know the moment like, we realize it's like, we are one. You are my great, great grandmother and great, great grandfather. The moment that we realized that, it was going to be like, why are we so distant? Especially we're both very family oriented. So don't believe the hype, don't believe the propaganda. You know, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, but um, I'm just extremely grateful, um, you know, to, to the people of Haiti and I want I want freedom for the people of Haiti. I want um, this U.S. puppet puppet they got right now. Um, I want him to walk away, um, and I want him to to disappear forever, and leave his people alone. This is what traitors do, you know. Just. Right now, they don't need war. They don't need no. They know that as long as they get the president, they got the whole country. And 
to me, it is just like, how can you not help the people who just look just like you? Just retweet, you know, like Madame Bookman, Madame Bookman on Twitter. She's amazing. She's amazing. She tell you everything that's really going on. And it is very shameful, you know, the mother of liberty and, and this is what it said to, you know, to honor your father and your mother. This is what really is, not what they say in church, you know, that that is just your immediate mother and father. It's just the whole diaspora, the whole diaspora and just like, and now we live in times, all you gotta do is share, share. Imagine each, each, each tweet got 10 million retweets. You know, and <laughs> this is, we can use uh, what they call guerrilla, guerrilla tactics. You know, pop up over here, pop up over there, and just be like, awaken and tell people really what's going on. You know, people are like already disconnected after the earthquake. That's when I fell in love with Haiti during the earthquake. I was still watching television. I would just come home and that's, that's what I was watching. I was like, so beautiful people, beautiful people. And I'm stuck in a Dominican neighborhood. I've been living in a Dominican neighborhood for 26 years almost. It is what it is. Uh, yesterday I was in Flatbush. <laughs> And, and you can see the smell, the different air. People are like uh, so much nicer over there. I mean, like, you know, over here, just like, and it's the same people. And it is the same people. But we do, they've been just indoctrinated differently. And it's sad. It is sad, you know, like, I hear, I know all these Dominicans with like if you I mean how do you got a French name in DR <laughs> you know I mean oh uh, but you tell them anything like oh you know those are evil they're stealing our country meanwhile all the Dominicans you know just like leeches they're going to um, to Puerto Rico they've been going to to to, per, to Puerto Rico and they don't even buy in the land they just, they're squatters and they just take the land, you know, after the Hurricane Maria, they just like, unbelievable. And they attack us too, you know, this, this is why this is why I don't like them, they attack us, they, they hate Mexicans. They hate Mexicans, they're constantly, you know, making jokes and shit against us. But that's okay, that's okay, you know, we, we'll address that you know, eventually when, when is the time come. But um I mean I hope I hope that this make people uh, wanna learn more. You know, I'm not I know I'm not the best person to, to be doing this, right? I know I know that but um but it's like, if I'm going to wait until, you know, I want to see this, you know, I want to see like people, I've seen a lot of uh, lectures and stuff, you know, but um, sometimes people, we get intimidated with these colors. So maybe this time you say like, oh, if she can do it, I can, I can do a video and let, let my friends know, uh, you know, about, about the greatness of the, of the people, of the people of Haiti. It's not what the media say. It's not, you know. And Haiti is going to rise again. And we all going to make sure Haiti rise again and take its place of honor in, in the hemisphere it, it, it deserves. Amazing people. I mean, like, 
And we can see, you know, like, DR totally sold out. And they're still starving. They're still starving in, in, in DR and stuff, but, you know, they think it's like, well, you know, it can be worse. That's not enough. But what kind of, what kind of, to say, oh, it can be worse. It can be worse. So have a lovely weekend. I know most people are still sleeping probably. It's 10, 10, 13 in the morning. So yeah, I want to go buy that painting. I don't even know if I have money. I have to, I have to look it up if I have any money in the house. I want that painting. I want that painting. You know, the, the father of freedom, the father of freedom where it all began. And, you know, just to learn that, that he's the same sign as our president in Mexico, about Scorpios, is like, oh, give me like, I gotta awaken my people first. We're all still waiting everything for the government to do it. All the government have to do that. Like I said, like, no, it's like, so I say to my people, what is our job then? What it is our job? They go all day, every day. Uh, oh, Mr. President, yeah, change this, change that, change this. Like, like, it's the genie of the lamp, basically. We cannot lose. We cannot lose. We cannot allow nobody to, we cannot afford to lose nobody. We already lost Bolivia. We cannot lose nobody else, you know. We gotta be all united, the left gotta be united, even if we hate each other, but we gotta remember that we want the power for the people, power to the people. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. How you turn this thing off? Okay. Oh, here, this <laughs> side.